see him, anything? Oh, yes. What? Handy Andy in the 3.30 at Canterbury. I meant a parking place. Oh, I don't know. What about that over there? Outside the mortuary. Well, you drive this thing like ours. It's taken 40 minutes to get here. Well, only because we took one of your shortcuts. Well, it was a shortcut to the race course. <laughs> Which is nowhere near here. You only asked me if I knew any shortcuts. You didn't say to the hospital. Well, where did you think, you pillock? <laughs> oh, there's one there. <laughs> You'll never get in there. Of course I will. I'm a, I'm a surgeon, mate. A man of uh, skill, precision, accuracy. <laughs> Maybe, but you're a lousy driver. Where do you learn to drive, mate? Dodge them cars, was it? Where'd you get your licence? Out of a cornflake packet? Uh, well, is there a judge to be in a kid's playground, not on the road? Ah, no, no. There is no need at all to adopt that attitude. I do have a witness. Your eyesight's a bit dodgy, mate. Maybe it's the black eyes. Well, I haven't got any black eyes. Better luck next time. Oh, Stuart Clark, would you give me a hand in front of these, please? Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, thank you, old boy. <laughs> That looks like it is carpopedal spasm <laughs> due to hypocalcemia from a parathyroid neoplasm. Hmm. Treatment, surgery. Case of wet nail varnish. <laughs> Sign, sticky fingernails. Treatment, three minutes, limp wrists. Uh, that's a shame. I haven't treated a parathyroid neoplasm in anyone under 50 before this. What are you doing? Classic case of Stuart Clark starvation. Treatment, one donut and coffee. <laughs> That's mine. It cost 50 cents. I paid for them. I thank you from the bottom of my stomach. You make a stranger to these fair shores of yours feel wanted. I want you, Stuart Clark. What did I tell you? <laughs> you just deserted me in a car park with a seven-foot gorilla about to smash me teeth in. Don't exaggerate, Duncan. It was a six-foot-ten gorilla about to smash your teeth in. Morning, Dr. Waring. Morning, darling. Morning, Dr. Baring. Morning, darling. <laughs> <laughs> he really is depraved, isn't he? He must be. I wouldn't kiss you, Morris. Good. <laughs> I don't mind holding your hand, though. For heaven's sake, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Morris, I think I love you. <laughs> 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 Come here, let me kiss you. I'll oh, stop it. Get out of here. Get away. <laughs> Look, this is just the sort of lack of discipline that Professor Beaumont wants to talk to you about this morning. Hmm? Oh, well. I wonder if that was about those whoopy cushions on the chairs at the senior surgeon's conference. It's probably the patient's wheelchair race from Ward 6 to Ward 12. Yeah. <laughs> Told you we shouldn't have used that lock from geriatrics. <laughs> Don't get your stretch to open a twist, old boy. Just because Beaumont is in the warpath? Hey, well, it's all right for you. He's not your boss. But when he gets angry, mate, he makes Dr. Crippen look charming. Is Dr. Crippen the new cardiologist? Uh, no, that's Dr. Jekyll. Oh. <laughs> hey. I wonder if he saw me playing footsie with that blonde in the operating theatre yesterday. What, the patient? No, the nurse, you bird. Oh, that'll be it. You and that nurse have had it. Well, not yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what time did Beaumont ask to see me? Well, he didn't. He's coming here. He's what? In about five minutes. Oh, I'll be off then. Uh, who's running away again? I'm not running away. I'm teaching some first years later. Uh, yeah, what you're teaching them? Backgammon, roulette? Oh, very funny. <laughs> and if Professor Beaumont catches you, you'll be back in first year. Beaumont doesn't worry me. And the only reason you think he's an ogre is because you're all so scared of him. <laughs> Why don't you stride into his office and take the offensive? Oh, yes. Yes! <laughs> you should walk up to his desk. Look him straight in the eye and say, now, look here, Beaumont. I haven't got all day. What's all this about? What's all what about? Very good, Duncan. Didn't even see the list. That's because it wasn't me. 
Now, that wasn't so good, but never mind, old boy. The next time I bump into Beaumont, I'll put in a good word for you. Yes, Stuart Clark. <laughs> I was going to mention something to you, but it slipped from my mind. Sometimes I think your mind has slipped completely from your mind. All right, pull up a chair and rest your basal ganglia. Yes, sir. Basal ganglia. Just a moment, basal ganglia, basal ganglia. I know that one now. Just a moment, it's, um, base of the spine, sir. Center of the brain. <laughs> but in your case, it probably is at the base of the spine. <laughs> All right. Now, what I'm about to say to you lot is going to be short, blunt, and not very pleasant. Nurse McNamara, sir. I beg your pardon? Short, blunt, not very pleasant. <laughs> very funny. Very funny. Just save your sense of humor for the patients or that little blonde you were playing footsie with in the operating theater yesterday. Oh, yes, you did notice her behavior, sir. Well, I, I did complain to Sister Cummings, and she said... Sister Cummings says that you're an oversexed, underworked, two-faced, double-talking quack. Yes. <laughs> Would you like me to leave, sir, while you discipline him? <laughs> I prefer that you stayed. It'll save your listening at the door. Me, sir, listening at the door? Door. D double O R. All right, sit down in that C H A I R. <laughs> An old leather thing with the wobbly legs. Now we're on to Sister Brady, eh? Sir? <laughs> I'll put Sister Brady onto you, Waring, if you don't shut up. <laughs> right. Miss Franklin, take this down to that new chap in cardiology, Dr. Uh, whatever his name Jekyll. is. Mr. Hyde? Yes, sir. Right. Who said this? If you don't shut up, I'll stuff this pillow down your throat. Uh, stuff the pillow, did it? Napoleon, sir. I know, sir. Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront. Oh, no, sir. It was your wife, wasn't it? At the staff party. I heard you arguing in Major Top. <laughs> It was you wearing, the day before yesterday, to a 55-year-old gastrectomy. Oh, yes, yes. Well, he had threatened to stuff my thermometer up my... I don't care! <laughs> in case you lot haven't noticed, the patients in this hospital are sick, not well, a bit under the weather, not feeling too good, and in some cases, after you lot have finished with them, dying. <laughs> They're bound to be touching. I have a list of complaints here that would stretch across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. What about this one? If you don't cooperate, I'll let your wife have longer visiting hours. <laughs> God, if it worse than death. Ah, yes. Dr. Stuart Clark. I've already complained to Professor Wilkinson about you charging a patient $10 to give him an anaesthetic that produces erotic dreams. <laughs> I gave him five dollars back, sir, when he didn't have one. I don't want to hear another complaint from this department for until the day I retire. Oh, when exactly will that be, Professor? We were wondering because we were uh, not friends. It was it uh, ah, yes, the informative Dr. Griffith. When a patient asks you what his operation will be, a simple answer will suffice, such as appendicectomy, cholecystectomy. Your hour-long graphic descriptions as to the amount of cutting, bleeding, and stitching have led to three cases of nausea, two cases of shock, and one patient who ran out of this hospital in his pajamas and never came back. It's not all our fault, sir. Some of the patients can be very troublesome. Well, I mean, only yesterday in Ward 9, some old bloke tried to fill up my coat pocket with his specimen. <laughs> the nurses shouldn't leave full bottles lying around. Well, that's the trouble, sir. He wasn't coming out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to hear any more complaints from this department. No more. Understand? Well, specimens will be the least of your worries. <laughs> Tomorrow night. All right, bye.
Richard. Yes. That's my Betty Wilson from X-Ray last Saturday. Yes, well, your Betty Wilson from X-Ray last Saturday happened to be my Betty Wilson from X-Ray last night. And from what she told me about your cosy little evening, she should not be up there in the red. I'm suggesting I cheated. I'm merely suggesting that perhaps you took one of your special anaesthetics and dreamt the whole thing. Now, let's get down to the bottom. I can prove that I'm worthy of a red pin, can you? Prove it? What do you mean? Well, if that pin is worth anything at all, it means that you had the sort of evening that will stand up to questioning. Oh, excuse me. I... Shut up, Morris. This is men's talk. Yeah. <laughs> you write to your mummy and say you've been a naughty boy. I was just going to say that. Well, I don't. Quiet. You're behaving like a couple of schoolboys. Yes, and we both passed our exams, so shut up. Well. Well, what? Prove it. I want to know about Betty's peculiarity. <laughs> well, you mean the leather bra and the whip? <laughs> no, very well. That is common knowledge. Everyone in the hospital knows that. I'm talking about the unusual markings on her body. I know all about her body, thank well, you. Well, describe much. it. Five foot six, blonde. Five Not six... that. I'm talking about the marks on the body. That's it. I describe them. You say yes. Then you go sticking red pins all over Australia. <laughs> Oh, no, you're the one doing the accusing. I am not accusing anybody. I'm merely reporting what I was told. Describe it. You describe it. Look. Shut, shut up, shut Morris. Up, yeah. You first. You first. <laughs> At the top of her left groin, she has a small oval birthmark. <laughs> Quite close to that, there is a little brown scar caused by her brother, who threw a dart at her when he was six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Morris, how did you know that, Morris? I was the one who took her appendix out. <laughs> You uh, had me a bit worried back there, Morris. I try to retain my professionalism at all times, Waring. Life is not all sin, gin and debauchery. Yeah, there's not much left, then, is there? <laughs> Generally speaking, both you and Stuart Clark are imbecilic, idiotic and... Irreplaceable, Morris? From what <laughs> Professor Beaumont was saying, I hardly think so. Oh, yeah? What do you say, then? Say Arjun Gunt Opery. <laughs> say Arjun Gunt Opery. Arjun Gunt Opery? Not you. It's a Latin motto. Gird your loins for work. Oh, yeah. Gird your loins for work. Gird your loins for work. Wearing, oh, you really are sad. You should try to curb your baser thoughts. Well, I do, I do, but they're so nice. Raise them. <laughs> try to think on the higher plane. Oh, I see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Give it a try. Ah, when I die, I'm going to come back as a great big boil on Beaumont's bum. <laughs> That's better. That's a fascinating area. What, Beaumont's bum? <laughs> No, reincarnation. Oh. Do you believe in it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got proof. Have you? Indeed, yes. Yesterday morning, the two sausages I left on the canteen table at breakfast... Yes. I'm absolutely certain turned up at lunchtime as hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, Morris, come on. Don't forget what Beaumont said. We've got to be extra special nice to the patients, right? Now, a big smile, if you please. Well, go on. I'm smiling. Oh. No, come on, try a big cheese. Oh, this is ridiculous. I want cheese. <laughs> That's it. Beautiful. Right, Morris, off you go. Morning, sister. Morning, Dr. Griffin. Morning. Morning. <laughs> like a rabid rat. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Waring, you, uh, you have a patient in there, uh, Mr. Phillips. He's just changing. Oh. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Are you the first, yes? Yes, Oh, good. Good. Uh, follow me. I am Dr. Stuart Clark, and you will be seeing quite a lot of me during your stay at St. Barnabas. Now, you are embarking on a rewarding career dedicated to the service of humanity. Now, from time to time, as you stroll down this long and lonely path, you will need someone to turn to. Someone who, with his vast knowledge, gathered overseas in the great hospitals of Europe, can offer you a helping hand, a guiding word. And while stocks last, 
A never-to-be-repeated offer of hospital equipment at very low prices. <laughs> now I've got here ophthalmoscopes, bleepers, torches, brand new stethoscopes. Well, almost new, anyway. Uh, no, no, don't go yet. Hang on. I haven't finished yet. No, I've got pencils, erasers, pencil sharpers, books, tickets. Listen, I've got a ground plan of the nurse's hostel. Very cheap. With a key. Hello, Duncan. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Heinrich Himmler. No, Himmler's in orthopedics. Is that some sort of pathetic attempt to amuse the patients? No, it's not. I've just found a seven-foot gorilla from the hospital car park. It's a patient of mine. Oh, I see. And mm. if he recognises you, you'll be a patient of yours as well. Exactly. <laughs> if there's any top of Beaumont finds out, I'll be a candidate for the anatomy slab. It's a very good disguise. Oh, thank you. The only people who'd recognise you are the people who've seen you before. <laughs> You'll be better off with these, though. And they're a bargain at $10. $10? Yes, but I tell you what, you can have them for five if you give me those in part exchange. Well, I, I got them from Lost Property. Well, no one will miss them then, will they? <laughs> five oh, dollars. splendid boy. Oh, by the way, you know, they're very good glasses. They're worth $20 in the shops. Really? Yes. Per 12. <laughs> What's all funny? Nothing. No, nothing. Uh, well, it's not sad, either. What isn't? Nothing. Are you the chaplain? Oh, good God, no. I, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm D Dr. Griffin. Uh, just a few questions to ask you, Mr. Old. I've spoken to the sister, and I've already given the doctor a specimen. So what's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing. The other doctor, he was uh, just a junior. He's still learning. I'm not having any learner doctor have a go at me. Last time I was in here with a splinter under my nail, look what happened. <laughs> Um, look, don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Old. Uh, the other doctor, he just asked you the boring bits. Boring? It's my life that's at stake. Oh, no, it isn't. Eh? Hey? Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, yes, it is your life, but no, it isn't at stake. You see, I'm the surgeon who'll be operating on you. You're a bit young to be doing an operation, aren't you? Oh, certainly not. I could do it with my eyes closed. What? <laughs> Uh, good day, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> Dr. Priest Waring here. Surgeon will be operating on you this hour, though. You're a surgeon? Uh, too right, mate. Bluey, copper. <laughs> what's wrong with your eyes? Uh, nothing, mate. Well, what's with the glasses? Uh, the sun. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's clouded over a bit. <laughs> uh, just, just a little bit shy, you know? <laughs> All right, well, that's it, mate. I'm not having you. I want to talk to someone higher than you, fella. I could stand on me tiptoes. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Just like to have a little joke with the patients every now and again. No, no. Oh, no. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, just give the old uh, touch of the touch of the. That's it. Uh, don't, don't move too quick. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> there is something wrong with your eyes. They're all screwed up. Oh no, mate. No, no, no. The uh, grandfather was half Chinese. Mr. Wearing. <laughs> What's wrong with your eyes? Well, I told you there's something wrong. <laughs> all right, you first years. Follow me and pay attention. Now, there's more to being a doctor than just swinging a stethoscope. Incidentally, those of you who haven't got one, get one. Medicine is about relationships. Excuse me. Not just... Sir, yes. Later, Sister Cummings. Yes, sir, really I'll be with you in a moment, Sister Cummings. Not only relationships with the staff, but also a good doctor-patient relationship must be established. Allow me to give you a good example. No, 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 I didn't say I was going to operate with my eyes closed. I only said I could. Get them stop. Yes, you did, and you said it was boring. My life was a story. Mr. Cummings, <laughs> do it, Clark. Get out of here. Never in my short but exciting life have I ever seen such behavior in a hospital before. You three have managed to wipe out in one morning 
what it took Louis Pasteur a lifetime to achieve. <laughs> Louis Pasteur didn't have to deal with Mr. Phillips. Do not interrupt when I am angry, or I will get angrier. Don't worry, sir, I won't interrupt. Quiet! <laughs> now, in order. To restore peace and order to Ward 9, I have had to personally promise to each patient about to be operated on that I will do it, and that you lot will be nowhere in the vicinity of the building at the time. <laughs> what do you think of that, eh? <laughs> well... You told us not to interrupt, sir. What? <laughs> now, as I don't normally do this sort of kid stuff that you think is surgery, and as I am also bloody expensive, I have decided not to charge them. Oh, that's oh, very nice of you. Oh, Thank you very much. However, I will be charging you lot. <laughs> Out! Oh, sir! Out! Tell you what. One of these days, I'm going to accidentally let my scalpel slip and penetrate Beaumont's mediastium. Oh, dear. I'm a married man. It's in his chest. Oh, is it? <laughs> now I'm going to have to do an awful lot of overtime to help pay off his inflated fees. Yes, well, I'm going to have to pinch something really valuable. I wonder what the going rate for a lady is. <laughs> Come on, let's go have a few jars. Good idea. Well, I wouldn't reverse if I were you. Look, just leave me alone. I'm perfectly all right. Yes, but there's a car... Just behind me. Right! Now look, be careful. Now look here, you stupid... Gorilla Phillips. No. Gorilla Beaumont. <laughs> <laughs> 